Hi and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. So today I wanted to share another security vulnerability with you. This is quite important, so if you are using VS Code and any extensions, please stay tuned for a few more minutes. It will probably be worth it. I have earlier mentioned the idea of a developer workstation or CI/CD pipeline as an attack vector. That's, uh, that might be for an, uh, somebody who wants to get access, to, that might be their way in. If they are able to sneak in some nasty libraries, etc. Uh, I have earlier video about dependency confusion attack, for example. So I'll, I'll put the link in here. If you haven't seen it, you should uh, go and watch that as well. Uh, but that kind of attack uh, has been uh, more and more common. So, so I think there's been more and more attempts recently, let's say within a year, to leverage the developer workstation as an attack vector. And uh, one of the recent ones is uh, attack through ID extension to be more specific Visual Studio code editor. And uh, I wanted to share it with you. It doesn't take very long, so let's dive into it. Uh, there's a company, not sure how to pronounce that right, so I'm not e really even trying. In fi Finland, we would say snook. But anyways, they wrote a blog that uh, mentions a few of these kind of attacks and few vulnerable extensions. And uh, the thing is that they are also showing here how they could be exploited and, and what's the vulnerability. And they are also pointing out that these are just two that they are listing, so there is more. So let's dive into my VS Code. As you know, I have been using VS Code uh, for my little demonstrations and also for my everyday coding quite extensively. And uh, I couldn't live without the extensions here. So if we go to extensions and check my status, there's instant markdown. Well, fortunately, I haven't installed it, but 124,000 other people have. So they have this vulnerability in the machines. And then the other one was open in default browser, even more popular. So not in my machine, but there is about 560,000 people who have installed it and therefore they have the vulnerability mentioned in the blog. The link to that blog is in the description of my video, so you should really go and read it fully. I just wanted to give you a heads up on, on it. And uh, kind of my own thoughts on this, uh, this particular vulnerability and developer workstation as an attack vector in general. So uh, takeaway is not here that VS Code is a bad editor. It's a good editor, it's light, a very, very lightweight and good multi-purpose editor. Takeaway here is that you should not be installing any extensions because VS Code without any extensions is not very good. If you want to do that, then you probably want to also uh, swap to using some more basic text editor. And even those come with plugins or extensions very often. So any, take any IDE. Any IDE could potentially have the same problem. Take any extension, if it doesn't have a vulnerability right now, it might in the future. So this is not even about tro Trojan horse kind of extensions. This is just about extensions having a vulnerability that may be exploited by, by clever people who have read the code. So my main takeaway is just to be aware of this, be mindful of this, uh, not install random tiny unnecessary plugins, Try to keep your environment a bit more concentrated and stick to the basic things. That works for me at least. Stay aware, read the blogs, follow a bit on, on these attacks so that you are not kind of blind to them. And finally, when you have that worst day of your life, uh, also you can think about blast radius. So if everything is wide open in your machine and, and your security model is purely based on the idea that nobody would ever be running any, any malicious code from within your machine, then um, that, that might be really worst day of your life. So is there anything you can do to lessen the blast radius? For example, common habit is not to run with admin level access. So if there is a boundary before you can pseudo yourself, that's already a little, little tiny improvement. Perhaps there is some network safeguards in place. Perhaps uh, you have taken care that um, your, your, let's say, secrets are in a little bit secret place, not e easy to access. Unfortunately, if somebody is running the malicious code 
uh, using an exploit and, and uh, is running them under your account, they probably have a lot of access already. But you can still think about uh, limiting the blast radius. It's always a best practice anyways. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, I would appreciate if you show it by clicking any of those nice buttons below, because that helps other people to find these videos and find my channel. Um, other than that, thanks for watching this one and see you in the next video. Bye bye.